Post-alveolar consonants are consonants articulated with the tongue nearer touching the back of the alveolar ridge, farther back in the mouth than the alveolar consonants, which are at the ridge itself but not as far back as the hard palate. The place of articulation for palatal consonants. Examples of post-alveolar consonants are the English palato-alveolar consonants, as in the words shill, chill, vision, and jill, respectively. There are a large number of types of post-alveolar sounds, especially among the sibilants. The three primary types are palato-alveolar, alveolo-palatal, and retroflex. The palato-alveolar and alveolo-palatal subtypes are commonly counted as palatals in phonology since they rarely contrast with true palatal consonants. Post-alveolar sibilants. The sibilant post-alveolars are sometimes called hush consonants because they include the sound of English shhhh. Dot. For most sounds involving the tongue, the place of articulation can be sufficiently identified just by specifying the point of contact on the upper part of the mouth, along with any secondary articulation such as palatalization or labialization. However, among sibilants, and post-alveolar sibilants in particular, there are slight differences in the shape of the tongue and the point of contact on the tongue itself, which correspond to large differences in the resulting sound. For example, the alveolar fricative and the three post-alveolar fricatives differ noticeably both in pitch and sharpness. The order corresponds to progressively lower pitched and duller sounds. Dot. As a result, it is necessary to specify many additional subtypes. Tongue shape. The main distinction is the shape of the tongue, which corresponds to differing degrees of palatalization. From least to most palatalized, these are retroflex palato-alveolar and alveolopalatal. The increasing palatalization corresponds to progressively higher pitched and sharper sounding consonants. Less technically, the retroflex consonant sounds somewhat like a mixture between the regular English O of ship and the H at the beginning of heard, especially when it is pronounced forcefully and with a strong American R. The alveolopalatal consonant sounds like a strongly palatalized version of somewhat like nourish you. Palato-alveolar sounds are normally described as having a convex tongue. The front, central part of the tongue is somewhat raised compared to the tip, back and sides, which gives it a weak palatalization. For retroflex sounds, the tongue shape is either concave or flat. For alveolopalatal sounds, the front half of the tongue is flat and raised so that it closely parallels the upper surface of the mouth. For the teeth to the hard palate, behind that is a sudden convex bend. The following table shows the three types of post-alveolar sibilant fricatives defined in the IPA point of tongue contact. A second variable is whether the contact occurs with the very tip of the tongue, with the surface just above the tip, the blade of the tongue, or with the underside of the tip. Apical and subapical articulations are always tongue up with the tip of the tongue above the teeth, and laminal articulations are often tongue down with the tip of the tongue behind the lower teeth. The upward curvature of the tongue tip to make apical or subapical contact renders palatalized more difficult so domed consonants are not attested with subapical articulation and fully palatalized sounds occur only with laminal articulation. Also, the apical laminal distinction among palato-alveolar sounds makes little perceptible difference. Both articulations, in fact, occur among English speakers. As a result, the differing points of tongue contact are significant largely for retroflex sounds. Retroflex sounds can also occur outside of the post-alveolar region, ranging from as far back as the hard palate to as far forward as the alveolar region behind the teeth. 
Subapical retroflex sounds are often palatal. Such sounds occur particularly in the Dravidian languages. Alveolar retroflex sounds tend to be apical, which are well known from their occurrence in northern Iberia, such as in Asturiones, Basque, Castilian Spanish, Catalan, Galician and northern Portuguese. As a result of the large number of retroflex varieties, differing IPA symbols are sometimes used for example, more forward articulations are often denoted with a retracted diacritic attached to alveolar rather than position of tongue tip. There is an additional distinction that can be made among tongue down laminal sounds, depending on where exactly behind the lower teeth the tongue tip is placed. A bit behind the lower teeth is a hollow area in the lower surface of the mouth. When the tongue tip rests in this hollowed area, there is an empty space below the tongue, which results in a relatively more hushing sound. When the tip of the tongue rests against the lower teeth, there is no sublingual cavity, resulting in a more hissing sound. Generally, the tongue-down post-alveolar consonants have the tongue tip on the hollowed area, whereas for the tongue-down alveolar consonants, the tongue tip rests against the teeth, which accentuates the hissing versus hushing distinction of these sounds. However, the palato-alveolar sibilants in northwest Caucasian languages such as Ubik have the tongue tip resting directly against the lower teeth rather than in the hollowed area. Laidfidged and Madison term it a closed laminal post-alveolar articulation, which gives the sounds a quality that Catford describes as hissing hushing sounds. Catford transcribes them as SZ. A laminal closed articulation could also be made with alveolo-palatal sibilants and a laminal non-closed articulation with alveolar sibilants, but no language appears to do so. In addition, no language seems to have a minimal contrast between two sounds based only on the closed-non-closed -closed variation, with no concomitant articulatory distinctions. Examples A few languages distinguish three different post-alveolar sibilant tongue shapes such as the Sino-Tibetan Northern Qiang and Southern Qiang, which makes such a distinction among Africans and the Northwest Caucasian language. Arabic. More common are languages such as Mandarin, Chinese and Polish, which distinguish two post-alveolar sibilants, typically per second, c, since they are maximally distinct. The attested possibilities, with exemplar languages, are as follows. IPA diacritics are simplified. Some articulations would require two diacritics to be fully specified, but only one is used to keep the results legible without the need for open IPA fonts. Also, Peter Laidfidge has resurrected an obsolete IPA symbol, the underdot, to indicate apical post-alveolar, normally include in the category of retroflex consonants, his notation is used here. The notation SS is sometimes reversed, either may also be called retroflex and written as post alveolar non sibilants. Non sibilant sounds can also be made in the post alveolar region. The number of acoustically distinct variations is then significantly reduced. The primary distinction for such sounds is between laminal palatalized and apical retroflex non palatalized. Non palatalized retroflex stops. Nasals and laterals occur in a number of languages across the world, such as in South Asian languages such as Hindi and various East Asian languages such as Vietnamese. The sounds are fairly rare in European languages but occur, for example, in Swedish. They are then often considered to be allophones of sequences such as RN or RT. Also, for some languages, that distinguish dental versus alveolar stops and nasals. They are actually articulated nearer to pre-alveolar and post-alveolar, respectively. The normal rhotic consonant in American English is a retroflex approximant. Retroflex rhotics of various sorts, especially approximants 
and flaps occur commonly in the world's languages. Some languages also have retroflex trills. Malayalam in fact has two trills, at least for many speakers, versus, the latter of which being retroflex. Toda is particularly unusual as having six trills, including a palatalized, non-palatalized distinction and a three-way place distinction among dental, alveolar and retroflex trills. Palatalized, palatalized, post-alveolar non-sibilants are usually considered to be alveolopalatal. Some non-sibilant sounds in some languages are said to be palato-alveolar rather than alveolopalatal, but in practice, it is unclear if there is any consistent acoustic distinction between the two types of sounds. In phonological descriptions, alveolopalatal post-alveolar non-sibilants are usually not distinguished as such but are considered to be variants of either palatal non-sibilants. Even the two types are often not distinguished among nasals and laterals, as almost all languages have only one palatalized, palatal nasal or lateral in the phonemic inventories. For example, the sound described as a palatal lateral in various Romance languages and often indicated as is most often alveolopalatal and sometimes a palatalized alveolar, such as in some northern Brazilian Portuguese dialects. The IPA does not have specific symbols for alveolopalatal non sibilants, but they can be denoted using the advanced diacritic like CN. Sonologists often often use special symbols for alveolopalatal non-sibilants TNL, created by analogy with the curls used to mark alveolopalatal sibilants. However, the actual sounds indicated using these symbols are often palatalopalatalized alveolar rather than alveolopalatal, like the variation for symbols like the decision to use the special alveolopalatal symbols in sonology is largely based on distributional similarities between the sounds in question, and the alveolopalatal sibilants, which are prominent in many East Asian languages. However, a few languages distinguish alveolopalatal sounds from other palatalized non-sibilants in the dental to palatal region. Many conservative dialects of Irish in fact have a three-way distinction among palatalized nasals between dorsal palatal laminal alveolopalatal, and apical palatalized alveolar, that is typical with oppositions among similar sounds in a single language. The sounds being maximally different in that each one differs both in the point of contact on the tongue and the roof of the mouth. The other dialects have lost one of the two palatalized coronals but still have a two-way distinction. A similar distinction between palatal and alveolopalatal exists in some non-standard forms of Malayalam. Examples Some languages distinguish palatalized and non-palatalized post-alveolar nasals and or laterals. Some Australian languages distinguish four coronal nasals and laterals. Laminal dental, apical alveolar, laminal post-alveolar, and apical post-alveolar. The non-standard Malayalam dialects mentioned above have five acute nasals. Laminal dental, apical alveolar, laminal post-alveolar, subapical palatal, and dorsal palatal. Standard Malayalam lacks the laminal palatalized post-alveolar. The conservative Irish dialects mentioned above also have five acute nasals, again including four coronal. However, only four different primary articulations are involved, as a secondary velarized palatalized distinction is at play. The sounds in question are laminal dental velarized, apical alveolar velarized, apical alveolar palatalized, laminal post alveolar, and dorsal palatal. The eight sounds participate in four velarized palatalized pairs. Other dialects have variously reduced the four coronal nasals to three or two. Post-alveolar clicks. There are two post-alveolar click types that can occur, commonly described as post-alveolar and palatal, but they would be perhaps more accurately described as apical and laminal post-alveolar, respectively. 